This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is time to get geeky, get techy. It is the Awesome Cast episode 381 here in the Soratron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Right on the tracks, right on the T line, uh, right beside very um, good modes of transportation. I don't know why I'm, I'm talking about that, but anyways, with us, he is he is not here in Beachview. He is in Dormont, PA. Just down the tracks from us, he is coming from Studio C. He is John Chichilla. He is a gadget guru. No, wrong guy, wrong guy. Yeah, he is John Chichilla, gadget <laughs> guru at Big Bank International. How's it going? How's it going tonight? Uh, well, good, to, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. It's good to be good to be back in Studio C and then waiting to, to come back to Studio A next week for pizza. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's okay because our next guest has been uh, making sure that he, to, he I, we gave him your share of pizza uh, for this <laughs> week. So uh, back with us, Crazy Kraus. Ron Kraus is with us again. Hello. How's he also going? does things of a technical nature for Big Bank International Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Things of a technical nature. Yes. <laughs> uh, and of course, myself, a video professional podcaster, as we do things like this at Sorgatron Media. Oh, I thought that you were saying something, Chilla. Uh, but anyways, this is your awesome cast. You can check us out here at awesomecast.com. Uh, check out this and also check out our awesome chats. We haven't had a, a, any in a little bit. We have some in the works. Um, so uh, and I'm trying to get a semi-regular schedule. We can't do weekly. Because I can't, I can't do that weekly at this point. Um, but if you guys got anybody that you think uh, we should talk to for the awesome chat, please let us know at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Or you can end up awesomecast on the Twitter, on the Facebook. On the Facebook Live is where we're at every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, everybody, for joining us over there, including Brandon, including our friend Dougie Doug, and, <laughs> and uh, everybody else that hops in throughout the night over there. And uh, and you can also a uh, short link to that is uh, live.awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the Google Music and video versions on the Facebook and the YouTube page. I, I realize I'm saying iTunes still. I know it's Apple Podcasts, but damn it, whatever. It, it's iTunes. Old it's, dogs, new tricks. I mean, it's been, yeah, exactly, right? It's the thing I've been saying for the last 12 years of podcasting. It's kind of hard to shake, um, and it's hard to add extra syllables in that rundown. Uh, thank you to our living, live streaming partners, uh, RiversAgePGH.com. Uh, I think we're going to mention something we did with them. Actually, we'll do it right now. Um, uh, we, I was part of the Acoustic Brunch with them um, where they were supporting, raising money for fighting uh, for net neutrality. It was a lot of fun over there. Uh, I got on stage, talked with them a little bit about my thoughts on it, um, and uh, and you can check out the live streams from over there on River's Edge uh, Facebook page. Uh, but we're of course Saturdays at 9 a.m. This show rebroadcasts over at River's Edge PGH.com. And thank you to our friends at uh, the 405 Media.com, where they carry us at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time, five days a week, all the work days. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. Matt Weller at the $5 Coffee Club. He gets the gold, uh, the extra content that we uh, try to record every week here. And, of course, Mike Fedor, Michael Fedor Show, fan of the show, dollar level. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting us. You can support us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. You can get get a shout-out for your thing that you want uh, uh, at certain levels. Uh, We we have uh, 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 the state of the show uh, part uh, over there as well. You guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here in the new studio um when's it like i guess we've been here for six months is it still new when do i drop the new it's it's it's, it's still, still 
I've, I've, I guess I've been other places be more than here, right? Year? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. When we do the year anniversary, I can stop doing that. So let's I think get... when you when you renew a lease for the first time, it's no longer new. Oh, I think we have like a three year lease. So well, there you go. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Got some time. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week, and let's start with Kraus because Kraus. You got a new TV. Yes, I got a new TV. And many people will look at my new TV and go, oh, my God, you cheaped out. But I did. I admit <laughs> it. I'm cheap. But no. Wait, 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 wait. Cheaped out at $500, I want to add. Yeah. But it's a it's a good TV. It's not the you know QLED that I droll over when I still walk into. By the way, I want to point out the last TV I bought was $85 here in the studio. Nice. So, Congratulations. It's an amazing Samsung plasma and yes. as heavy as balls. Yes. I, and that's actually what I replaced. Mm-hmm. I had a um, probably first or second gen Samsung 720. Yes, that's right. 720. Oh, um, man. Yeah. You, 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 and I forget that's a thing. And I don't, I think they may still sell them, but TVs that max out at 720. Right. So it was a 720 Samsung um, DLP. And uh, it, I've had it for 12 years ish, somewhere in that ballpark. That's not bad for my, my original plasma, did not last 12 years. <laughs> yep. And you know why it lasts that long is because I bought the, the seven year warranty from Sam's Club. So, of course, that, all that money oh, went to waste. Okay. Okay. But, um, but uh, trust me, trust me, when it doesn't, you're done. <laughs> so, I, but, I, but I've been staring at TVs for a while. Mm-hmm. The other day, the wife and I walked into Walmart in Boone Township and a lot you know how they have the whoa that got really loud I was adjusting sorry about sorry that. and um when you walk in and they have the little row of like things on sale for the week they had a few TVs and I thought hmm and I'm looking and I'm looking and finally my wife just says just get it already <laughs> and just, just like just end just end it Grab it. Sold. Yes. That's all it took. And I bought a new TV, so I now have a 4K UHD. It's beautiful. Although, when I plugged it in, love my loving wife, I plug it in, and I'm all excited, and I got football going, and I'm like, look, you can see the blades of grass. And she goes, oh, that's nice. Meanwhile, I look over, and she's got this big shitty grin on her face because she knows she's messing with me. Because I'm like, are you serious? You can't see it Never mind. And then, you know. Sounds like something I do to Sorg. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So, but it's a great TV. And now I need, you know, I need a new Xbox. So, to go along with the 4K. But we won't talk about that yet, honey, huh? (laughs) If she's listening. Nice. So, that's all. So, so are you using any of this? Have you set it up on your Wi-Fi? Are you using any of the smart functions? You know what? They're there and they're great, but no, because I've all my family's already been programmed to use the Xbox to get to Hulu and Netflix and those things. So to and to change the remote controls and the operations, John, I don't have to tell you this. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. I was just interesting if you, I was interested if you experimented with it because I, I agree with you to to change the standard operating procedure of the family around a new tech purchase isn't always the easiest thing to do. Show us a guide to <laughs> standard operating <laughs> procedure for your family. It, it, it's in it, but I, I'd be interested because to your point about Netflix, so Netflix on your Xbox isn't going to be in 4K because your Xbox isn't 4K. Right. I was wondering if you set up Netflix. I haven't, but now else. that you mention it, I'm going to have to go home and try it. So just to see, right, to see if there's a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, do, so, just as a quick, quick refresher, if I have 4K, yes, what can I do to watch 4K content now? Is it supported by your cable provider? Is it supported by like how much internet do I need in order for? Ne- I know Netflix has it, right? Yeah, Netflix does have it. I believe Hulu has a 4K. Has a 4K, right? Apple. Have, Apple. If you have uh, Apple, has the um, Apple TV. You need the Apple TV 4K, but right. Right. you need the, the 4K a lot of their version. Content. Of right, right. So what? And their content was given out free. It was a free upgrade, and I know 
I, th- I think the studios weren't too happy about that. But just like the, you know, you need the 4K Apple TV, then you would also need the 4K ver. Well, if you went with the, if you're an Xbox person, so if you go with the S, that gives you the 4K and UHD, chilla. Yeah, I think so, but not for. Was it? Is it not for gaming? Yeah, not for gaming. But you get the well, you definitely get the UHD, so you get the the black blacks and all that stuff with the S. I think maybe it is you got to go to the X to get true 4K gaming. I have one right there. There's oh yeah, right you there. have one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where, it's where, on, where's it's that? Where's that? PTV, but it's right behind you over there. Yeah, it's it's right. It it blends in because it's so nice and black. In black, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at all that black plastic. It's yes. all matching. <laughs> so there's a, so if, if you know, I think a year ago, if you're like, oh, 4K, it's like, well, come on, we can watch three things, right? Right. Now it's we can watch, we can play. What internet do you need to stream 4K on a lot of these services? Like, you're not getting this with the five meg plan. Like the standard no, plan, right? Yeah, no. Like, like, I, is it, if it was the only thing you were doing, <laughs> like if you were, if your house had, if you weren't running anything else, I could see a five meg pipe. I, I think it isn't it like four meg dedicated. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of compression. Like There's a lot of compression happening, right? So, yeah. so the, the, it's actually not that bad. So. Right. Uh, HD, uh, I know when we've streamed HD, like a lot of times it's like three, four, it is three, four, five bags sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, for 1080. Right. So yeah. anyway, so, uh, so your awesome Samsung 55 inch 4k TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is that an upgrade size wise for you? Yeah. I went from a 42 like, to mm-hmm. 50. It seemed like 42 is just like an average size now, which is insane when you think about it. Um, yeah, so there was a TV grub upgrade for the whole family. Nice. So I went from mine, then my stepson got the 42, and then his, 30, his 37 went to my mother and father in law. Mm-hmm. And they're actually ditching cable and because they live up on Mount Washington. So I bought them one of those little mm-hmm. digital antennas. We plugged it into their television, and they got 42 free tv channels yep and they were paying 21 dollars to comcast and for 15. i tell you what if you are an if, if you're an older person that pretty much just wants to watch a lot of those old shows there's a lot for you and let me tell you when i when they saw is it me tv when she saw that she was going to now have me tv she was thrilled so mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of good stuff out there so they're actually I'll getting on, I'll, leave, I'll leave it on for my dog every day yeah. So, Chilla, you're excited about something that just got announced. Finally, yeah, it's one, happening. One more, thing on that. Oh, one, yeah. one more thing about the 4K comment. From what I've heard, and it's not there yet, but I have a feeling by year's end, you're going to see 4K over the air. So to your point about Ooh. doing the hand-me-down and, giving, and, and hooking up the digital antenna and whatnot, you're going to get that 4K over the air. And Sorg, to your point about data, There's no compression. And that's what I'm waiting for. Well, here's the other (laughs) thing. Also, how many of those channels are still broadcasting at 480? (laughs) And now we're going to add to it. So that's the one thing I will say from from a cable perspective. If you take, and and I noticed this the most with Sunday football, if you take and set up your antenna, and turn on Fox or whomever you watch your, your Sunday football on and you flip back and forth to the over the air, to me, it is a noticeable difference. And where I see yes. it the most is in the digital artifacting that takes place over the blades of grass versus what you see with an uncompressed the even 1080p. Test. Over the air. And it, the other thing I even noticed, and this was back, <laughs> I'll date myself, back when Heroes was on TV the first time, um, also over the air supports 5.1 digital, uncompressed digital surround sound. Um, so you're getting not just a, a premiere video experience, but a premiere audio experience as well. Mm-hmm. 
which is why I still can't figure out why they can't push that data over coax, but it's for people much smarter than me to figure out. Absolutely. Chilla, what are you excited about here? What am I excited about? This? So Apple finally today, um, after much delay, has announced that on February 9th, the HomePod will be available. Um, so it will actually be up for order on the 26th, so in three days. Um, more like probably two days and eight hours. Um, but this is their <laughs> home speaker, their answer to Siri and Google. Um Obviously, the quality of this is not is not meant to match something like the Echo Dot or the the um, what's Google's small one, the Google Home Mini, the the, the small puck sized one. Um, the thing that surprised me, and I'm I'm guessing we'll get more information about the the device was delayed and whatnot information. They're delaying some of the capabilities of the device out of the box. So creating stereo sound with a, with a, with a pair of them. So one of the things they showed last year was you could get two of these things, pair them up, and they would figure out left and right channel um, along with AirPlay 2 multi, um, multi endpoint support um, where you could add them across multiple rooms and not have to peer-to-peer stream to them. Those are both coming later this year, which kind of bums me out. Not that I can afford $700 off the bat on two small speakers. Um, But the one thing I am interested in is this device obviously syncs up with Siri. Um, Not that I want her to necessarily answer all my questions, but I am interested in some of the iMessage feature functionality, hands-free conversations, because I I find myself funny enough taking more and more calls on my iPad because I just hand off the call to that or onto my my laptop. Um, and then obviously I can control all my my uh, home automation equipment, so lights, TV, et cetera. Um, so this is definitely something that's of a, of a lot of interest to me. I think it's interesting looking at it that it's going to be kind of that, that home assistant, the expensive one. <laughs> But it's going to be the home assistant, but to me, it's with the very high quality speaker. Right, right. So that's the bigger thing. So it's speakers, right? It's multiple. Right. It's one per $350 you spend. So, yeah, yeah, but I thought there were multiple. multiple, (laughs) No, multiple speakers contained within. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's seven. Yeah. Yeah. What? There's seven tweeters and six microphones and a high excursion woofer yeah, and it actually uses the apple designed a8 chip so what is that from the iphone 6 so the same thing that's in your iphone 6 is powering up this thing okay mm-hmm. yeah, well, there will be one of these in my home too yeah and a lot of that chip is going to be uh, they discussed i remember from the announcement that that's what helps determine like does the math that says this looks good this sounds good in this room mm-hmm. because we it, it, yep. it's figuring out based on sound coming back at it, you know, what what the shape of the room is and how to put that sound out there. So yeah, this cool. will eventually replace my wife's aging um, iHome IW1. So it's an um, AirPlay speaker that we have in our dining room. It sits up on our china cabinet and we're starting to have problems with it. John and I have talked about it before, so mm-hmm. this will eventually replace that. But I'm going to wait for those other features to actually be implemented because that's one of the reasons why I want to buy it. Certainly. So it's the- just in time for it's just in time for Valentine's Day, and it's like the gift that keeps on giving. It'll be upgraded all year long. All right. So while you guys are loving these expensive, high end, super technology things, I'm excited about cardboard. Nice. <laughs> Is it cardboard? Let me bring it back Missy, around. Valentine's Day cardboard. Give me sheets of cardboard, and actually, actually, it goes a long way with this. So, Nintendo just announced this past week. Um, it's a kit called Labo. It is a DIY cardboard add-on uh, system for the Switch. So, you get this set, and it comes with uh, you know a game that that everything's going to work with. It does everything from, I want to pull the video up here as well for you guys to see on, on the video version. So it, it does everything from, um, 
and just like there's just some cardboard being made and stamped out. It, it starts with like you know the punch out versions of it, right? And you get to do things like, um, you know, you can make a motorcycle and, and your switch fits into these things. Um, you can do a fishing pole. You can do like a pulley system backpack crazy thing that controls a robot. Like this is amazing what they're doing with this. Um, I'm really excited to see kind of what they what they pull together here. Um, you know. Pull it up. You can make a birdhouse. I don't know what the birdhouse is for necessarily. <laughs> so the, the robot one was my favorite one. Just looking at it and the way that the cords kind of controlled the actions of the robot, that looked like a blast. Mm-hmm. No, this is this is really cool. So uh, it, it's it's and if if because my my thought was also like okay, the cardboard's going to kind of um, oh there there comes the robot. Uh, there's the backpack, and you see all the boys. I'm like, this is going to wear over time, right? It, it, it has to be, especially if kids are using it and everything. But then you can take the um, the punch outs that came with it to stencil and cut out replacements, for replacement parts. Oh, so now okay. you can always continue doing that. And it's shown like the customization, so people can go and you know uh, and, and can uh, customize these with markers and everything. And there's some customization kits they're putting out as well. Uh, it's it's a pretty cool setup, and in the in the world where you know, especially with the Wii's and everything like that, I felt like there was a little bit of um, add-on and dongle uh, uh, overkill for, with with things like that. Hey, here's a thing that works with two games. This is something that is uh, seventy dollars, I believe it is, and you can do a lot with this, and it's renewable, and it's it's fun. There's actually two versions. It's, there's the robot kit, and then there's the variety kit that has a lot of the other things. Um, so it's, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. It's coming out 420. So, you know, what you can do while you're, um, um, building your cardboard things. Uh, so it's, Hey, it's legal in more States now. Um, but, uh, but, uh, no, it, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. It's something different. It's very, it's obviously for kids. It's very maker centric, right? Mm-hmm. Around video games. So I think that kind of, uh, adds on a little bit to it. So. I would agree. Mm-hmm. And it's always like, oh, like if your kid keeps breaking the controller, I'm like, oh no, I get a new one at Walmart. Like, no, nah, just make it. Just, just, just here's some more cardboard. Yeah, here's, here's some more cardboard. It's like we'll go, we'll go down to the Office Depot sh- uh, store and get you some more cardboard, and 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 you just have to make your own thing. So you can just go down to the Home Depot and get the old boxes from their the, the say, four <laughs> model Eagles. refrigerators. I IGA over there's got to have some cardboard. There you go. Here. There you go. Old from all those Amazon packages, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's, here's a million dollar side business. Just start three D printing these things out of plastic. Kind you of know like there's going to be a huge market for that. Kind of like my five dollar uh, VR headset, mm-hmm. which is amazing for just oh I want to just watch some videos. You know, it, it's it's it's. You know, it's something that started off as cardboard and eventually down the road. I don't know if this is going to take off to that extent, but it was still kind of fun. So if they keep doing it, and the other thing is, is if they keep building on top of it and allow you to either get get additional cardboard um, stencils or keep building on that platform, I could see it lasting a long time. We actually got one of those um, R two D two little bits. Um, kits for Christmas, um, and I mean, we play with that thing all the time, and that that's meant to be dismantled, reconfigured, rebuilt. It has all kinds of missions you can go on. I think we're, and I think even with that, we're only like we're less than halfway through it, and we're probably eight hours in. Mm-hmm. So, jeez, as long as they keep it up, I, I think you could, you'll there'll be a lot to do with it. Meanwhile, other people's doing great things with uh, cardboard are good friends up the street at Slice on Broadway. Um, we actually got our, our sponsor pizza in tonight because they've been uh, supporting our, our Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. And uh, last week was the Wrestling Mayhem Show's 12th birthday. So we got a little written in there, happy birthday slices from our friends at Slice on Broadway. Thank you so much to those guys again. Uh, check them out here up the up the way here in Beachview, right on the tracks, as well as down down in Carnegie, PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates Open year round, and East Liberty is their newest location. I know some friends of the show very excited about that happening. So please go check them out. Support the show. Support friends of the show. SliceOnBroadway.com. 
and tell them that the awesome cast sent you. Uh, so uh, we have uh, this is a pretty cool local focus story actually. Um, there's a, a a a company in town called We Speak, and they deal a lot with uh, kind of AI driven um, you know language education. Right, there's a couple companies in town, of course, that do this. Um, but uh, they there was just a huge announcement this past week. So We Speak is partnering with CNN. This Pittsburgh based company is partnering with CNN. And it's called en.news. So en for English. So basically what it does is give you kind of language lessons while you read the news. So if you need to learn English, they use the content that's naturally like that you want to keep updated with at CNN, if that's your provider of choice. Um, And this is exclusively with CNN, I believe. Um, and, and it goes through and there are lessons that go along with those articles to help you learn English in a very practical way. Uh, there, 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 you know, flip cards and other, other activities are baked into these stories. So it's a pretty cool way. And again, very local. Um, so if you can, you can go to en.news to check it out, I believe for the most part, it's free. Um, so if you, I say, if you're listening to this, I don't know if you need to learn English, but maybe we're your lesson. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so I've heard of people just listen to like, like Spanish and, and French podcasts to learn Spanish or French as well. So, um, you know, but, uh, no, it's, it's cool. Uh, learn English free with CNN with, uh, today's, today's news becomes today's English lesson. Um, a really cool thing coming out of, uh, a, a good Pittsburgh company with we speak. So good. Do you know, are there are there plans to do any other languages? Because that would be something I'd be interested in. I, I think I know English pretty well, but <laughs> is, is there anything to teach me like Italian or, to your point, French or listen to? Because to your point, I mean, I don't know enough of the language at all to well, to listen to a podcast. If, but, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think We Speak itself does those other lessons, but I don't think CNN has that. Okay, what's up? Oh, oh, the stream went. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the in-house stream went. Uh, so, but uh, no, it's a, uh, so I think, like I said, I think it's a pretty cool thing they have uh, going on there. Um, I, I would hope it's something they roll out eventually. Cause especially if it's like, you know, I know terms like foreign embassy and the Senate and things like that and names of, of politicians and people in the news. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, it absolutely makes sense to say, "Hey, you know, well, let's let's translate that over and see what we can do there." So, um, so go check that out. Also, we have um, this was a, a, a our friend Laura, Laura who who works here in the uh, in the back offices um, for another company uh, uh, shared this on Facebook and uh, it made the rounds uh, around our circles. Somebody, and the headlines cut off here. Somebody um, apparently put together a quantum leap map. So if you're familiar with awesome. quantum leap, he's, he's leaping into people's bodies across time and, and trying to set things right and everything right. So somebody took applied that to Google Maps. Let's see if we can go full screen here. See if this, this wrecks this thing. Um, and they mapped everywhere that he leaped into. You can chronologically go through the seasons and see where he went and kind of on the like here it tells you the episode it gives you the little summary of what it was about you know like here he was uh i was something about time travel theory um if you go through and and i thought this is interesting because i actually i was just kind of curious and went through the map and ended up you know in our backyard right like let's let's see what's in pennsylvania and uh i'm in kansas city i'm in pennsylvania and i forgot that Pennsylvania, south of Pennsylvania here, south of Pittsburgh, you hit this guy. This is the series finale. Because really? he's in a bar in, uh, what is the town? I don't know, they call it Co- Cokesburg, Pennsylvania, but it's actually, I zoomed in here. Actually, I think it actually is Cokesburg. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because he's in the bar, he saves some miners, and uh, apparently talks to God or something, depending on how you 
interpreted that final episode. Uh, then, I, then I forwarded to an article that talks about how bad that final episode was. Uh, but anyways, I have fond memories. But then again, I was like 10. I have very fond I was memories. like 10 when it happened. So, you know. Um, but still, I think still I still think it holds up. So a really cool uh, mashup happening there. Uh, thanks, Laura, for uh, for sharing that with us. You guys, you guys, Quantum Leap fans. Yes, you I was. Know. I was a huge Quantum Leap fan. What What are the different? Are the different shapes the different seasons? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, all right. Hey, I also want to give a shout out to our friends, uh, Millville Music Festival. They're coming up here on May. Wait for the May twelfth. Uh, so, um, uh, great. Uh, there's going to be, there's going to be streaming. It's right in Millvale, which is right across the, uh, river from Lawrenceville. It's practically Pittsburgh. You guys, uh, go check it out. We've been helping them out with the online and everything, uh, through psychic media services. And, uh, I want to give you guys a, a local shout out for that as well. And a shout out to our friends, uh, Pitts, bold Pittsburgh, bold pgh.com. Um, or they, okay. They have sport, a sports podcast now. Bold Sports, which I, I I don't listen every every week because it's just not my my bag. But I've been hearing a lot of great things, and I, I check in every once in a while. They're going to do a Super Bowl brunch here in the studio that morning. It's so recording the kind of pre-game podcast uh, with Bold Sports. So uh, that's over on the Sorgatron Media Facebook page for more information as it develops. They're working out all the details on that. But there will be here. They'll be recording, and there will be food of some sort. Uh, so go go like that and uh, for more information. All right. Uh, so, anyways, bullpgh.com if you want to get further for that as well. So, geez, where do I start with this, you guys? Um, Kraus, you brought this up. But we're trying to discuss if this was a good number. Oh uh, yeah, YouTube TV. Mm-hmm. It, it says, um, you know. They, within their first year, they have less than one year, three hundred thousand subs. Oh. And we were just we were talking about that before the show started, and I posed the question: you know, is that a good number? And then in the article that I referenced there, they mentioned that in almost the same amount of time, um, actually a month less. <clears throat> um. God, I've lost my link. Hold Hulu's on. live TV yeah, service Hulu. launched just a month later, and it's already acquired 450,000. To me, that sounds like a good number. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that sounds great. So so I'm aware of WWE Network, when they launched, said they needed to get to a million. They needed to. They needed to get to a million for it to make sense. They were also doing their own To content. make money or to make sense? Uh, Yes. Um, <laughs> okay, but, but remember, they were leaving. <laughs> they were taking all the stuff that were on pay per view for sixty five dollars a, 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 a buy, oh, right. and putting okay. it all on this thing for nine ninety nine for everybody, okay. right? So, and after a year, they I think they had just cleared a million, or were just under within the first year. They're well into million, million and a half right now. Okay, but they've also launched in multiple, like every nation they possibly could. Right, so that is a good point to bring up for this number, because when in the first few months that it was released, it was only in a very select few cities. Yes. So this wasn't like a we couldn't get it in a, a, you know a nationwide launch or a worldwide launch. It was a select city launch. So that maybe so that to me makes it feel like it is an even better number then. So so the great thing is. I got two angles on this for you. One, you got plenty of service, and you, you got plenty of options. You know, I've been like in the back of my head is like hmm, maybe I should get Directv to make sure I can watch Monday Night Raw or live or something, right? But in the meantime, you got a lot of free trials you can try out. That is very. If you're true. just like, man, I need to check out the last episode season finale live of Doctor Who with everybody else. We're like, man, I have not signed up for Sling yet. All right, let's give that a shot. Man, well, I have not signed up for YouTube TV. Let's give that week trial a shot, you know? Sword Google email addresses are free. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. That's what I hear some people do with their WWE network. But I like that it knows what I watched and sticking around with right. it. So, I mean, if I'm going to go with a service, I'm going to go with a service, right? Right. But uh, Oh, and I completely agree. And, and I've kicked around the idea. Of going to one of these services, because after all, you know, if you travel, 
your TV comes with you, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and that is a very appealing thought. And, and while Verizon will tell you it's a wonderful thing, you know, I've used their app and their streaming app. Did the Go 90? No, they actually have a, you know, a str- like I can stream the things that are on my DVR oh, the and, Fios the, one. and the okay. Fios one. And it's, it's decent, but even in my home, I wouldn't say I get super awesome quality TV. I can watch the shows, you know, on my tablet or something, but it does lack some, you know, some of those things. Mm-hmm. And I've considered some of these services and dropping cable, but I'm just not there yet. I don't know. I'm still tied to that cord for some reason. I dropped cable when I was hard to do all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife can attest. Uh- <laughs> What's, so, so Hulu and um, so I use direct net direct TV now, which is the over the internet, no satellite dish type thing. Um, how are they doing with the local channels in the markets? Like direct TV now has added ABC, NBC, Fox, etc. And I actually get like the local WTAE channel. Obviously I can do over the air as well where I live um, and, and get and pick those all up. Are they, are they doing pretty well on the local programming? I believe that's part of what took so long with the rollout is they were writing the, like we didn't get the Pittsburgh rollout until the Pittsburgh locals were included. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they won't, they won't roll out to your location until they have that exactly. science field delivered. Whereas I don't know what Hulu's doing, but I know direct TV now they, they added it over time, but it kind of was worth it to sign up early because you got a lifetime deal of something like 10, $15 off every month for as long as you kept the service and you got a free, if you sign up for three months, you got a free Apple TV. Mm -hmm. So the YouTube TV won't load, (laughs) Uh, but I pulled up Hulu and it has the big four and I'm presuming that's Telemundo or the, the Christian channel. Um, But I noticed it doesn't have like my Pittsburgh or the point or whatever it is. And it doesn't have, what is the other one? There's two other CW ones. CW. It doesn't have CW. Um, so you're not getting your superhero shows on this, uh, uh, apparently. So, and, and that's just checking my, my zip code here in Pittsburgh. So uh, your, your mileage may vary depending on where you're at. The, the other, the other question I would have is, do they have the streaming agreements set up? Like the one thing that kind of bums me out. And the reason that I haven't just completely cut over to that yet is, um, I can watch HGTV live, which is a big thing in our house. Um, But I can't log into the HGTV app. It doesn't like count as my cable provider. If you know what I mean. Right, 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 right. So I wonder if they also have those streaming agreements set up that they honor it as a cable package. Yeah. I'll be interesting to see, but it's getting, I mean, it's more realistic, right? It's kind of like the days of because I remember or like we, we didn't have cable until we got Prime Star, and I remember it didn't have everything, right? And mm-hmm. which you know Prime Star became Directv, and that's what my dad still has to this day. He's literally had like the same provider since 1996. It just keeps getting bought by new companies. <laughs> so, um, if you're an AT and T wireless subscriber, you're very familiar with this. Uh, in the same period of time. But anyways, um, but it's also easier because I was looking at it. It's literally flipping a switch to go from my 1199 Hulu to 43.99 for a Hulu and TV. And can you easily turn that on and off? See, that's where I think it would be worth it too is if you yeah. could ease, if you could quickly, you know what, I want it this month, but I don't want it for the next two months. And then I want it for a month and I don't want it. Yeah, and it says, I think it says, uh, when, you, when you do it, it says one week free and then. So there should be um, a, 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 you know, a method to do that. So um, it a, it's a, looks like it's, it's pretty easy. Um, now for them. Tell, tell you what, Sorg. Yes. I think that a deep dive on this would be some great gold content for the end of the show. Could be. Could so be. let's go ahead and move on to a couple of these other stories in here. Okay. Uh, Shilla, tell me about uh, uh, the 
Team Viewer 13. I'm a Team Viewer user, but you're saying there's new there's new features coming up. So there's there's a new feature in in Team Viewer 13 that if you have to try to support someone's iPhone or iPad, um, if you're familiar how it works on like a Mac or a Windows machine where you can watch and kind of, kind of take control of the device remotely, this allows you to at least watch any of the remote iOS devices. You can remote control Android, but iOS you can only watch. Um, it actually uses the new iOS 11 um, broadcasting and sc- screen recording button that allows you to also nice. broadcast. So remember we were talking a couple, probably a couple months ago about how, you know, how Twitch was going to take off and how Microsoft was adding some streaming stuff into their their apps to allow you to stream your games to their services using the screen recording function. This will actually allow you to broadcast a team viewer. Then the person on the other side can actually remotely watch um, your screen. There, there's been a number of workarounds to try to do this kind of stuff where, you know, someone's having a problem with, can you send me a screen capture? Can you plug it into a Mac and I'll remote into your Mac and then watch the screen via your Mac? Um, uh, I've seen where people air airplay to a PC using something like uh, Air Squirrels has Reflector. Um, number of ways to do this, but this actually allows you to directly stream from the device. Obviously, if internet connectivity is the problem here that's going to be kind of tough but um this this kind of takes that that support to the next level and i thought it was a pretty pretty cool thing for them to add yeah it, it, and it, now team viewer generally it's one of those where you can use a free license and and everything you know kind of bug you if it thinks you're using it more than a a regular user would uh, for for licenses and those licenses do Kind of add up to you know fifty dollars a month things like that uh, fifty dollars to two hundred dollars a month it says uh, if you get a standard license for this um, yeah but I think it, that that two hundred dollars you're talking like enterprise size right 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 so I uh, you know officially it's a little expensive but but this is just kind of included is it baked into the app uh, if you have Team Viewer on your phone yes okay. it's supposed to be baked into the app I, and I thought I thought it was nice for those people that you know occasionally have to support parents or siblings or or whoever else remotely it kind of makes helps that make sense all right so i'm going to have to upgrade my team viewer and try this out because i'm still on version 12 it looks like so and it's it's, again something you uh, we use kind of occasionally around here if i need to check on a render or something right so um that's awesome i have to check that out uh team viewer 13 go get it it's a free download and uh you can use a free license as long as you're just Kind of using it sparingly, I guess, right? So it's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, from there, let's. I, I, we we talk about drones, and we've always talked about like kind of the future of drones. Where are they going to be used? Um, what's going to kind of normalize their use, other than these things buzzing around us at events, right? But finally, finally, finally? Um, a lifeguard drone completes the world first ocean rescue. It's Australia's Little Ripper UAV uh, saved two teens sucked out to sea. It's kind of a helicopter sort of situation. Of course, it's going to be a little bit bigger to uh, to help out with that. Um, but but again, it, it is a real use of this. And, then, and I think that's really good for the future of drones because people are going to see this story. It and deployed a flotation device or two, if I remember right, if I read the story. So it's correctly. pretty much just delivering fro- uh, flotation devices. Um, it, so the, it, it was part of a New South Wales $250,000 shark spotting strategy uh, when the dress, distress call came in. And within 70 seconds, according to Engadget, the, arrow, the, the helper had tracked down the stranded duo, dropped them a flotation pod, which they used to safely make their way to shore. So I didn't like just pick up and, and grab them or anything. It just dropped some flotations and uh, you know allowed them to kind of help themselves a bit. So they just they just got sucked a little you know out from shore basically that they couldn't get back on their own. But let's face it: if you're tired and you're swimming, and suddenly you have a flotation device, makes a difference. That, that solves the problem exactly. They were <laughs> around forty of these little rippers were reportedly shipped to uh, Australia's Surf Life Saving Clubs last year that's awesome 
We, and it looks like it can disperse the rafts with the GPS beacon and a number of other things. So definitely see use for that. Nice. Great use of drones. Good to see that, that, that coming up. So awesome. Anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out here? Well, speaking of drones, Kraus, you, you were looking at the new DJI uh, drone. Yeah, that's DJI out there. Mavic yeah, Air. Take a look at this guy. What are they doing? It, well, A, it fits in your pocket. <laughs> and it's uh, 4K, 3 gimbal drone you know like you know dji's made some pretty small it, it drones it looks like one of those mini drones you've seen before with the <laughs> with the with the quad um propellers yeah but you know 4k 30 frames a second you know kind of drone mm-hmm. if that's what you're into um it's it's quite amazing actually when you look at how it transforms and folds up and literally i watched a guy on youtube uh casey nice that did a review of it t- today and he literally slid it into his gym shorts pocket. That's what. That's, that's how awesome. small this thing gets. That's awesome. I, I I think you have to get one of these so you could test out the 4K video on your TV. Yeah, and it's only eight hundred eight hundred dollars. Yes, seven ninety nine. So you know, I'll buy two. No. <laughs> Um, but I just thought it was the the size is what's really amazing to me, and um, from the video I did watch, you know, even flying the device, um, you know, because of it, you would think because of its size maybe it would get tossed around a little more, but everything I've read so far, everybody's you know saying how well it flies and how stable the device is, and the video quality is pretty spectacular. That's awesome. And it says only eight hundred dollars. That's actually that, yeah, that's not bad for a drone. That's that really isn't bad for a drone. The problem is, if you wreck it, that's an expensive wreck. You know, you know. Um, we okay. We had a legit production drone discussion a couple weeks ago. Okay, and I believe there are insurance plans or uh, that you can get with these now. So that's not a problem. <laughs> anymore okay. and like oh i wrecked it but guess we're getting it, another one but isn't it like basic do you have to pass some kind of like drone flight examination or technically something technically you should get licensed but well no i'm not saying i'm not saying for the operation i'm saying for the insurance company wouldn't they want like, i think if you're licensed that should be enough like okay. they are probably going to want you to be a licensed drone operator okay not like oh this hobby has got a drone and he drove yeah, her, and and he drove her right into the lawn i don't know yeah. uh you know so and is it one of those things where like you have to have at least a piece in the lawn? of it wait wait wait, wait sorry. what's that cross uh, what was that cross is it one of those things where you have to have at least a piece of it to claim your you know i had to have the microchip to bring it in for the insurance like I, yeah. I remember when i was a kid my mom had insurance on my eyeglasses and then i lost them in lake erie and she was freaking out because you had to have some piece of the glasses to turn in to get them replaced and of course i lost them in lake erie but my grandma found them i remember but in lake erie my grandmother found my glasses i can't yes, remember what did. what warranty we had for some computer <clears throat> and they were like even if you bring us in at like part of the microchip we will replace it for you right it's weird sorry chiller what was what was that you were saying i was saying didn't demuns lose his drone in in the mon it ran out of batteries or something yep yeah, wow it, it went out and just didn't come back <laughs> <laughs> so but see these dji ones they're smart enough to know whoa it's time to come home and they yeah, they yeah, come yeah. back on their own correct yeah there's a lot of like smarts and gps and and, and things happening yeah. so like it it's 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 the dog that has the the go home beacon you know it's 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 it, they're, they're pretty smart right now from the sounds of it so so if you're going to get into one as long as you don't cheap out on it like don't get the 80 dollar one at staples although maybe you should so you learn how a drone works um but you know if you're gonna i'm gonna drop a thousand dollars on a drone it's gonna have the bells and whistles to protect you from yourself right in this in this case so so we're completely getting drones guys this year uh <laughs> right R- right right sure yeah yeah so, drones drones um you guys uh, you guys actually both have some app recommendations so if we can get through those real quick to end the show here okay. um and I, they look like they might be a little bit related if, if i'm not mistaken chilla you have one um for drafts and an all-in-one app for your brain dumps it looks like yeah. 
So, and I, I had actually never heard of, heard of this app before, and they were actually talking about it on MacBreak Weekly. So I was pretty impressed, and I looked it up and downloaded it. For, mm -hmm. It is, I think, like about five bucks, um, but it allows you to use your voice to dictation, uh, quickly type in information um, into uh, multitudes of kind of. I would almost imagine it as drafts or notes on your phone in the, in the native app, but then they have all kinds of additional things that you can uh, take posts and post them to Facebook, take them and send them to iMessage there. You can create templates for, for iMessage. The, the, it, it's not necessarily the, the cool idea about taking down and quick capturing brain dumps of information. It's what you can do, what they've created it to do after the fact with all of that information. It supports Markdown. And where I where I found it interesting was I think it was Renee Ritchie was saying, you know, he he writes his blog posts while he's driving using this app. This is where he gets wow. he gets down a lot of those ideas. All right. And, buying this one. Um <laughs> and then he was saying and then um it has a, an Apple Watch application and Leo was saying how this is his go to for anything list related because you can control it all from the watch and he uses the watch to then create massive amounts of lists of you know things he wants to look at things he needs to do um, and you can break that all out easily within the app too it's not just one stream of consciousness this, you can break the, it all apart so. does this become a replacement for notes i think case? it's i think it's a combination of notes reminders hmm. and a number of things but what i thought was interesting with it too was its ability to then take and post to Twitter and post to Facebook and integrate into iMessage, all of those additional beyond the, the just your basic note, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you, it, it'll sync with iCloud, you can share, you can share it with other people. Um, so if you have like a, a grocery list going and you, you don't make it to the grocery store, but your wife does and you want to send it over to her. I mean, it's, it's to me just perfect. Well, it's now on my phone. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll be checking that out and see if that we can integrate that a little bit into stuff. Yeah, I, I listened to that same one, and I think they were talking about another program that's for, like, the Mac or something that they wish was on the phone to do something similar that is supposed to be better at that than even this is. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, no, no, it, it was – thank you, because that's something I wanted to look into, too, and now I have it. Uh, Krause, what is your uh, app pick here? My app is called um, Files Go. It's for Android. It's from Google. Um, and essentially, it's just... Because a, we're all about app equality here on this show. Yeah. Thank you for helping us out with that. You're welcome. Um, but it's essentially a file viewer, file explorer um, type app. But it also has some really cool storage options in it where it will go through and look at your phone. And it takes a look at the temporary files, maybe duplicate files unused applications and it's essentially giving you a way to say hey like for example when i bring mine up unused app i can free up 2.75 gig of space on my phone by just removing the 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 apps that i have not used in the past four weeks um things like temporary app files here's another 416 meg that i can free up by clearing that and it looks at large files, like I have some videos and things that I took while I was in New York. And it's, you know, so it's saying, hey, look, here's a quick and easy way to save yourself some room on your phone. And I just thought it was very interesting. And plus, it's a file explorer, too. So if you're looking for something in particular on your mm -hmm. phone, you have that option also. That's cool. That's cool. I always get confused about that file management when I get to an Android yes, device myself. So Right, because it puts things in very interesting locations. It does. It does. And it's not the same. No. It really isn't. I, you know, I end up getting, you know, um, Chilla's cast off Samsung devices and, and, and my old <laughs> Nexus. So, you know, and I'm still like, you know, I still keep those around. Mm -hmm. They're nice things to read comic books on and everything. One day I'll get that Marvel Unlimited subscription back, I think. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, just kind of walk, watch and read some stuff on Kindle, actually. Um, so have we talked about that on the show? Here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a side tip on top of all that. You know, Amazon Prime has, uh, Kindle has, 
comic books included. I did not know that. It, it's kind of here and there. I've been uh, uh, reading Darth Vader. Uh, it's it's trades. Oh, wow. It's trades for the most part. So like, hey, here's the first like six issues of Darth Vader. Right. They, they're really pushing the Star Wars stuff, of course, around when the movie was out. But it also has a lot of Marvel. Um, and I think it has. I think it has some more independent stuff too, if I recall. Because uh, I was already using it to read. I was buying the WWE comic books because they're really good. And actually, there's one that's just coming out that somebody that we uh, that did his own wrestling comic book is now um, doing one for WWE. Uh, so I want to go read his. And of course, I'm not going to get more comic books. I'm actually considering selling all my physical comic books at this point, right? Um, but you know, it's one of those those things. So um, so if you have Amazon Prime, which I know a lot of people do, uh, load that Kindle app and. There's different things. There's the Kindle Prime and then there's Kindle Unlimited. And I think one of them might be an extra fee or you need a physical. Unlimited. Or, or, you, need, you need the physical Kindle. I think some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but I was surprised to see the Kindle Prime is if you just have it on your iPad mm-hmm. or phone or something, it does let you pull those things up as well. So a uh, little extra stuff. And that's what kept me from actually subscribing to Marvel in a minute again. Cause I'm like, Oh, there's some stuff to read here and I don't have to go ahead and spend another $10 a month. Right. Yeah. So, there you go. I'm trying to get myself to read a little bit more. Between that and I, I read a whole 10 minutes of Player One, Ready Player One. Oh, you way. have to read, finish it. I know. So I was, it was already kind of interesting the way it started. It's so, yeah. so good. It was like, oh, okay, I got to keep going with this. So Then I saw Chachi being very disappointed about the trailer, and I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't finish this before the movie. <laughs> so No, you got you to gotta read the book first before mm-hmm. you see the movie. But then it makes the movie even worse. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Ron Krause, crazy Krause on the Twitters. Yes, sir. Anything else? Nope, I'm good. All right, <laughs> chill on the Twitters. Josh, chill on the Facebooks. And of course, Sorgatron Media, where you find all the great podcasts we have going on here at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great stuff, including some of the stuff we're talking about with Bolt Sports and everything like that. I, <laughs> and here's a tech thing important updates are pending. And it wants me to update right now or remind me later. That's and it won't let me switch my camera angles or anything. Guys, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. Check us out live here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, producer Missy. Remind me later. Interrupt the show later tonight. There you go. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.